the Liz missed my midweek press conference, but still got the win. You still got the win. I don't know. I don't know how that affects us. There's, you know, a relationship. <laughs> well, how about a couple of defensive scores tonight? <laughs> um, it was fantastic. Um, Justin Coleman has, you know, has always been ready. Um, and he, he was as ready as he could be today. You know, Jay Lane, unfortunately, had to go out early with the injury. But Justin Coleman, since the Green Bay game, um, he had to step up. And um, he's been playing well in practice and doing great things. Um, so it was awesome to see him get his opportunity. And that was his first interception ever. And his celebration game was stank. And so we got to, you know, that's one of those things you got to work on. Yeah. So we, we're, we're working on that with him. You know, it's his first one. So we'll give him a break. We'll give him a pass. Uh, it just it just felt sound, you know. I think first half we, you know, we kept getting nitpicked by, you know, fourth and inches, you know, third and third and two and two and a half, you know, and then they moved the ball three inches, and then I was first down, and you know, we we just <coughs> kept shooting ourselves in the foot, so it was good to just get get that out the way and and, and just get back to playing sound football. Was there anything said at time in the locker room or guys just know that they actually keep it back now? No, no, nothing. Honestly, nothing was really said. Um, Guys just went out there and played disciplined sound football. Um, you know, offense came out executing. They came out firing on all cylinders, and it's a different game when you're playing with the lead. Um, their offense has to has to play. You know, they can't play the the chip and dink and dunk game. They have to take their shots. They have to drop back and pass. And when they when they know when our D line knows they have to drop back and pass, they get a lot more aggressive. And Chris Richard got more aggressive in his play calling, and um, all that kind of piggybacked on one another. Watching the uh, offense when you were on the sideline. Quarter, the first drive with Russell had a great win. Was that, was that angry Russell at his best? <laughs> angry Russell, I have, that's awesome. Trademark that, angry <laughs> Russell. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, he 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 was in his bag today. Um, you know, he I think he he had a few plays get away from that that he wanted back, and um, I still think he only threw five incompletions or something like that, it's five or six incompletions, and. Um, and outside of that, he was he was lights out. Um, he was he was hitting people on the move. He was throwing dimes. Um, he had a great pass to to P. Rich. Great one to Jimmy. Um, the one to McKissick at the end was was shoot up, as good as they get. The one to Noe, you know, that looked very familiar. Him moving in and out of the pocket, maneuvering like he does, and then throwing the ball very accurately, um, making big plays. And I think that's what we needed. Um, I think JD was a huge spark plug. Um, <coughs> Obviously, Marcus Smith's <clears throat> strip sack, force fumble, Bobby's recovery with the touchdown sparked some things too. But I think JD McKissick made a huge difference in this ball game. Why have you been lobbying for the Lions? Why have I been lobbying? Because I knew what he could do. He's a ball player. Um, as old school as it sounds, as 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 rudimentary as it sounds, he's a ball player. He's you know wherever you put him, you can put him at. I put him at right guard and feel comfortable. You know, he's one of those guys that's just a dog and and. On this team, we've always we've always appreciated and celebrated the uniqueness uniqueness of players like him. Um, all he goes out there and does is play as hard as he can, to and through the whistle. And Pete has always celebrated those guys. It doesn't matter where you drafted, doesn't matter where you picked up, doesn't matter what you had from your past. If you come out here, you give everything you got, you're gonna get your, get on the field. And I think Pete finally showed that today and got him on the field, and he rewarded him. Oh, you're you're freaking juice for them. You're freaking juice. Um, not just because it helps your team, because you're happy that all their hard work was paying off. Um, they're your teammates, so it's like your brothers. You know, JC getting a pick six. You know, I'm just as excited as if I got it, um, because it was such a huge play, great play by him, um, and a huge play for his career. Um, and I think that's that's what's cool about it. It helped us win, and we appreciate that. But it's cool to see those guys see their hard work rewarded. You know, see their game develop and, and increase, and it's cool. But you know, the other end of that spectrum, when guys go down, we get the reality of this game. I mean, what does that do to you as a player? It's devastating. It's, it's really devastating. I think I think a lot of a lot of people, a lot of fans out there, you know, have, have, have looked at players even less like people because of fantasy football and things like that. You go, you say, oh, man, this guy got hurt. You're not thinking, hey, man, this guy got hurt. He really, you know. He's really physically hurt, and he's going to take time to recover, and it's probably going to affect his mental state and his physical state. And you know, now he has a long, rigorous rehab. You're thinking, "Oh man, he's messing up my fantasy team." And I think that's why you've seen the frustration from a lot of guys, a lot of players saying they don't, 
they don't care about your fantasy team. They don't care about how it affects your fantasy because these are real players. This is real life. You know, this is real life for them. This is their real job. And that's affecting their well-being. Now, your fantasy team may not win. And, hey, guess what? You'll live the next day. This is their well-being. They may, they may not ever get another shot. They may never get another down, another play. And I think that's why, you know, it's so devastating for players. Um, thankfully, um, I don't think it's as serious as we, we first thought. Hopefully, God willing, you know, just um, – trying to be optimistic in the situation. But, um, you know, it's terrible when you see things like that because you, you, we know the guys personally. You know, a lot of times the fans know us from the surface um, and, and, you know, we're 32 and, and that's, he's running the ball and he's doing great for my team, but they don't think about the effects that an injury will have to a, to a guy's mental capacity and, and his family and, you know, what his mom and, and, and girlfriend and wife might be going through. You know, it's, it's, it's different. But, uh you know, I'm happy. I'm happy that it's not as bad as they initially thought. You mentioned that when you said it at halftime, you know, it was just a spark of big change. That most of you guys kind of just knew what, what needed to be done when you guys went back out there. Right, right. Uh, we definitely knew what needed to be done. I mean, we're a veteran championship ball club, and we've we've been in tough situations before. We've been in dog fights. Um, football is, is is an incredibly humbling game, um, and every, you have talent all around. So some what some would consider a bad team can can beat the best team in the league on any given day. And that's what makes our sport so unique and so so awesome to, to play is you have to bring it every week. And if you 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 out there sugar footing or, or slipping or, or get caught falling asleep, you'll get you'll get your head caved in by by, by a team that you're supposed to beat. Um, and thankfully we, we we came together and played like we know we can play and hopefully this is this sparks um, us for the rest of the season. Richard, <coughs> now that Justin Coleman got to step in, what, what have you seen from him? He's been in here a short time. Poise. Poise. He has he has tremendous poise. Um, obviously, he knew Jacoby from New England, um, so he had a few keys on him that we didn't necessarily have um, that he shared with us later. Um, but but I think I think he's been incredibly poised. He's the perfect person for this team. Um, the moment's not too big for him. He's always ready. He's always prepared like a starter. And you also have to give the rook credit. Um, Shaq Shaq came in there and played admirably. You know, got thrown in there and has to run with the ones. Has to be just as prepared. And, you know, he, he gave up a little score today, but he was in perfect position. He played the ball as well as you can. you got to give them credit, too, at times. But for him to be out here as a rookie, playing as well as he is and, and executing the way he is, um, I, my hat's off to him. Anything else, Ed? Thank you.